Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive and I have an amazing guest here today who's going to help you lessen your stress and deal with cravings and, and just be able to be more useful and awake and aware in your life um, and it'll make everything easier for you. So I'm really excited to have her here. But before I introduce her, I want to say if you're here uh, for the first time at the Heal Your Hunger Show. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. And this is where we really dig into the underlying causes of emotional eating. Now, if emotional eating is kind of a new term and you don't really think you're an emotional eater or you wonder if you are, guess what? I have a quiz that you can take on my website, which is healyourhunger.com, H-E-A-L, just like the Heal Your Hunger show, healyourhunger.com. And it's a free quiz. It's three minutes. You can take the quiz and find out if you're an emotional eater or a food addict or somewhere in between. So definitely check that out. And we are recording this live in the Facebook group, The Secret Sauce to End Emotional Eating. So guess what? You can actually watch my podcast recordings live and make comments and have my guests comment back when you're in there. So don't miss out. Be a part of the Secret Sauce group. Just go to Facebook and type in Secret Sauce to End Emotional Eating Now. Ask to join and we'd be so happy to have you. After all, you can't do this alone. Nobody can fight the world's hardest addiction, which my experience is food because you can't just put the plug in the jug like you can with alcohol. You have to eat three times a day. So don't try to struggle with this alone beating yourself up and saying, oh, I should be able to do this on my own. What's wrong with me? Guess what? This is the hardest of all addictions to overcome and you must have support. So join us in the secret sauce group and get that support, um, you know, and finally experience what it means to be free from food obsession. So on with the show, I'm going to tell you about my guest first. Um, well, first I'm going to say hi, Ruthie. <laughs> Trisha and everyone else. <laughs> yeah, before I brag about you, Ruthie Cohen Joyner is, is addicted to yoga, meditation, EFT tapping, and hanging out, hanging out in the Akashic field. She's a transformational retreat and workshop leader, meditation teacher, private coach, and uh, certified in hypnotherapy, Akashic record reading, EFT, which is, stands for Emotional Freedom Technique, and Matrix Reimprinting. Um, as well as a former nutritionist. So she's got a lot of skills and she has bundled them up into a powerful uh, message of healing and hope and just really being, you know, your, your best self and vibrating at your best and highest level. So really, really happy to have you here, Ruthie. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. I'm glad to be here today. Yeah, it's great to have you, especially during holiday time. And um, and it's been a crazy year, right? Like this has been a crazy, crazy year. So um, talk to me a little bit about what it's been like for you, this whole COVID thing. <laughs> well, you know, we all have our own level of stress, right? And now we add COVID stress on top of, on top of that. And if you live in the United States, we'll just add some political stress on top of that, which, you know, right. so we just have so much stress this year and the holidays are a, a crazy time in themselves. So yeah, everybody's dealing with stress. I certainly am. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, and I think the holidays, I mean, this is a whole warped you know, time right now where, where the holidays aren't even the same. So right. we, we don't even, I, I don't even know that we can say that, the, the holidays are going to be customarily stressful because we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so that's what I love about the holidays is that we are, you know, we're pretty much still in quarantine. You know, we've got stay at home orders still. Sure. So, um, and I think that's great because it means we don't have to travel as much, although some of us choose to, I, I have chosen to, but, um, but I won't be with family um, during the holidays. I, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, I will be for Christmas, but not for Thanksgiving. And, um, and I just plan on chilling. I'm not even going to eat turkey on Thanksgiving day. <laughs> I'm just having a salad. 
<laughs> so, um, so I just, I love how, uh, how we can make our own rules this time. And I think that's really, really important. But for some, you know, there will be family stress, you know, people are, are not totally staying at home. Some people are getting together in small gatherings as families, hopefully small gatherings. Um, so there'll be some stress and some people may be doing the cooking and, and adding a little stress to their plate, um, you know, by volunteering to do the cooking. And I'm always amazed how much emotional eaters choose stressful situations. Like we choose to, you know, volunteer for things because I always say overeaters are overdoers. And so we're always raising our hands saying, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, I'll host, I'll cook, I'll drive. Um, so a lot of the stress we have is self-created, honestly, but nevertheless, stress happens. And, you know, during holiday time feelings, you know, even if we aren't going anywhere, emotions are higher. We experience loss um, more, you know, loneliness more, um, you know, grieving and, uh, and just longing for family. I mean, that's probably going to be the biggest or most heightened emotion we have, right? Yeah, I was thinking about some clients I have that are widowed um, or on or, or alone for other reasons and how tough this is going to be not to be with family this year because of this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, it's, it's just, that is the craziest part about the holidays. Is it just, you know, between the music, you know, and, um, you know, tradition of what we're used to doing right. um, that basically is it, that comes up for us. And so, um, and that brings up all our feelings. Forgive me. Somebody's at my door. <laughs> we're going to take a little break right now while I answer the door. I thought it was unlocked. I thought it was unlocked. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm doing a podcast interview. <laughs> so, um, ah, what was I saying? Such interruptions. Um, well, we were just talking about holiday stress. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So anyway, um, th that's a thing. And so what I love about your work is you teach people, um, so many different things. Um, but especially the tapping, the EFT, which uh, my clients do ask about, I'm not trained in it. And that's really why I want you to be here to show people how they can use this um, to immediately alleviate stress and get more emotionally balanced. So can you talk about the work that you do? And then maybe we can go uh, yeah. into some practices. Yeah, and I wanna share why, or my limited understanding, so I am not a science expert, but a little bit of understanding about why EFT tapping works because you're literally tapping on meridian endpoints when you do this is that it's a, it's a brain thing. So this is a version of Dan Siegel's hand, what do I say, brain hand model, hand model and brain model um, of how the brain works. So if you will imagine that this part of the, um, this is your spinal cord down here. And then this part is the reptilian part of the brain. This is the part of the brain that um, is keeping your temperature regulated and keeping your heart beating, you breathing and all that. You don't have to think about this part. Okay, this so part that's the bottom. So, so for those listening, she has her hand up uh, with her fist closed. And yes, so she's- Yes, with the thumb on the inside. That's important. Yeah, thumb on the inside. Okay. So we're and talking about the bottom part of the hand is the reptilian brain. This is the part you don't think about. This is all the subconscious things that are going on, the heartbeat and temperature regulation, digestion, et cetera. Okay, the middle part of the brain is where the thumb is. And this is where the amygdala is in the hippocampus. We're coming back here in a minute. And then like the fingers are in a closed fist on top is your thinking brain. This is your prefrontal cortex, okay? So this is the part that we make our conscious decisions from, <clears throat> excuse me. And in traditional therapy, you're only dealing with up here, the conscious thinking. With the tapping that we do on the face and on the body, we are literally bypassing conscious brain and getting into the subconscious brain. It literally affects the amygdala, which is the emotional brain. So by doing the tapping, we are helping you calm your body. And so you lower your cortisol level, which is your stress hormone. And you literally start feeling very feeling calmer almost immediately. As a matter of fact, most people find that just in the demo level, which we'll do today, you know, we're just going to be playing with it. They start feeling calmer. So it calms stress and it can calm cravings. 
also great for physical pain and changing beliefs and dealing with trauma and phobias. I mean, there's a whole lot of uses, but today we'll stick to stress and cravings. I love that. Thank you for the explanation. That really was simple and easy to, you know, understand what's going on and why tapping works. I just love that. And it's such a useful, you know, do it yourself tool, (laughs) you know, which I always love also. Um, Okay, so let's get into this. It's stressful time. We're cooking, you know, we've got all the kids at home. Uh, It's noisy. Uh, there's all kinds of foods going through our kitchen and being brought over to our house. And um, so what do we do to kind of f- find emotional, of course, my clients know to meditate and take a time out or go right. for a 10 minute walk and pray and all those things uh, for sure. But besides that, you know, right at the moment, let's do some EFT. Absolutely. So I totally agree with all of those things you're saying. I think meditation and I'm in nature, et cetera, or the backbone. But in the moment, when you're in the stress, taking deep breaths can definitely help. But tapping, I find much more effective. So what I want to show you is I'm going to teach you how to do it. And since some of people will be doing this audio instead of video, I will say that on my website, yourtappingjourney.com, on the What is EFT page, there's a video showing you the tapping points, and there's also a PDF of the tapping point. So I'm going to do my best to explain them for those of you that aren't going to see this. Um, But anyway, just letting you know that resource is available. So we're going to start by tapping on the side of the hand. And this is the side under the pinky finger. So if there's a, if if you think of another way to describe it, let me know. Well, I've heard it say the karate chop. Right. And and that, that term is not used as often anymore because it's considered not politically correct. But, right. But, yeah, but I bet people know shopping. exactly what I'm talking about when I say it. So it's That's like, right. you know, the, right. the back side of the hand. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not always That's so the PC. Side of the hand. And we use the fingers from the other side, or some people even use the palm, lightly tap. And we're going to, when we do this in a minute, so I'm showing you the points right now. When we do this in a minute, we'll do what's called a setup phrase. And our setup phrases, even though whatever our tapping target is, it might be even though I'm so stressed out or even though I'm really craving this con pie or whatever. Um, and then we say something positive at the end. I deeply and completely accept myself or I'm working toward accepting myself or I accept how I feel. Or when people are in a lot of fear or worry, a lot of times I just like to say right here and right now, I'm OK. Excuse me. Which, so which in and of itself is such a beautiful affirmation. Yes, I love the right here, right now, I'm okay. So we'll use that one today. So we'll generally do three times on the side of the hand. You don't have to, but we generally do. And then I like to go to the eyebrow point. So this is right between the eyes. And I say the Botox point because then people know what I'm talking about. Right between the eyebrows. We just lightly tap with two fingers. And we'll do what's called a reminder phrase, <clears throat> excuse me, which might be something like the stress I'm feeling. And I'm going to finish showing you the points and then we'll do it. So the next point is the side of the eye. And this is right on the bone on the side of the eye, not back on the temples. One handed or two, you don't have to do both. And then our next point is right under the eye. And again, we're still right on the bone. And we're just gently tapping with two fingers on one side or both. It doesn't matter. And it's just slow tapping. And there's not a set number of times. It's just long enough to say the reminder phrase that we're going to do in a minute. Our next point is under the nose. And that's just between the nose and the lip. Our next point is called the chin, but it's actually between the lip and the chin. So it's that little cleft in between. And again, you're just gently tapping. And by the way, you don't even have to use words. You may notice that you're feeling calmer if you're joining us and tapping with us just by doing these points. Because again, we're affecting the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that's where we do the flight or freeze. It's our stress part of the brain. It also just distracts you from whatever it is you're stressed out about. Could be that. Maybe that's why it works. (laughs) <laughs> our next point is called the collarbone. And I recently learned if you put your arms out straight and then you bend them in, where you land is the right point. 
I also explain this to people is you find your collarbone and then you go down an inch and out an inch. But it's right about the same spot. So don't worry about it being exact. Well, especially yeah. if you use a few fingers, then you're kind of like covering the area. Right. And I've seen people do a whole hand thing where they're reaching across the whole thing, which is very helpful if you're driving in stressful traffic, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the next point is the underarm point. And let me see if I can get where you can see this. It is down at the bottom of the bra line. Right here. here. Yeah. And you can do it on the same side of your body or across your body, whichever is it, is it uh, Is it under your underarm or more on your back? It's under the arm. Oh, okay. So That's yeah, it's not reach. further back on the back. I've seen okay. some people do it closer in, meaning more toward the front. It's supposed to be under the arm. Okay. Yeah. And then the last point we're going to do today is the top of the head. And this is the governing meridian. So I really like doing this one. If you go to YouTube and watch videos of tapping, people do different points and start. Some people start on the top of the head. Some people don't use the top of the head. Don't worry about it. That's all there is, but we're going to some words with it and do it together. And as Trisha mentioned, you can do this for yourself. But my um, disclaimer, if you will, is it's very good for calming you down in the moment to deal with everyday stress and worry. However, if you want to use it for something deeper, like healing traumas or something, I highly recommend you work with a trained, um, preferably certified practitioner, because you don't want to get into places by yourself that you might not be comfortable dealing with. So yeah. anyway, my analogy is it's like the dentist. If you brush your teeth at home every day, that's part of your dental, you know, your dental maintenance, dental care. If you had a um, cavity, you would go to the dentist. So, right. <laughs> All right. Deeper so drilling. Gonna, yeah. So I'm going to grab a sip of water. If you have water or something to drink, I recommend having a sip just because it's good to stay well hydrated because this is energy psychology we're doing. <clears throat> it's important to have, have water to clean up energy. So let's just go to the side of the end, hand, tapping on the side of the hand, repeating after me. So Tricia, you get to be my echo today. Even though I have all this stress in my life. Even though I have all this stress in my life. Right here and right now, I'm okay. Right here and right now, I'm okay. Even though there's so much stress. Even though there's so much stress. Right here and right now, I am safe. Right here and right now, I am safe. So even though I can think of so many things to be stressed about. Even though I can think of so many things to be stressed about. I'm open to the idea. I'm open to the idea. That I can look at my stress. That I can look at my stress. Allow myself to feel my feelings. Allow myself to feel my feelings. And release and let it go. And release and let it go. Right, and let's... just for those people listening, I'm just going to say we're doing that by... Um, tapping on the lower side of our left palm with our right hand if we're righties. Yep. Or the other way, the, the hand doesn't matter. Right, for lefties. Yep. yep. All right. Let's take a deep breath together. And let's go to the eyebrow point, right, right between the eyebrows. All the stress. All the stress. Side of the eye right on the bone on the side of the eye. I'm feeling all this stress. I'm yeah, I'm feeling all this stress. I'm feeling so much stress under the eye. Feeling so much stress. Feeling so much stress under the nose. Just acknowledging all this stress. All this stress. And are we trying to get in touch with the feelings of stress? You can you really don't have to focus that deeply because your body knows it. Okay. So I'm not going to go into that right now. We'll just keep tapping. Going to the <laughs> chin, which is right between the lip and the chin again. Just acknowledging all the stress. All the stress we're going through. The collarbone point. 
I'm feeling all this stress. Feeling all this stress. I'm glad you did that breath. We'll talk about that in a minute. Under the arm. So much stress in my life. So much stress in my life. Top of the head. I'm just feeling all this stress. Feeling all this stress. Okay, we're going to stop prepping. And I realized I actually forgot to do something before we started, Tricia. <clears throat> and that is it's helpful to do what's called a SUDS level which is just to get a number zero to 10 of how stressed you are at the beginning of the tapping and then where you are after you do a round of tapping. So okay. I that we forgot to do that in the beginning. That's okay. But, but I'm going to ask, do you notice, do you feel any calmer after just one round of tapping? Absolutely. I, I, I think just the, the, the motions of it, and I'm sure the meridian is tapping the meridian points as well, right. Right. but just on a conscious level to have my, you know, mine kind of um, off of the particular thing that might have been stressing me out um, and just sort of the me methodical tapping feels really good. Yeah. Most people find that even just one round of tapping that they feel calmer. Um, I love that. God, it's so easy to do. And it's, I, I forget that I have this at my fingertips, so to speak. <laughs> right. Yes, I've heard the term freedom at your fingertips before, because it really yeah. is amazing. And when I first saw it, you may have had the same reaction, Tricia. When I first heard about it, I thought that is ridiculous. How in the world can tapping on your face and your body do something for you? But it's amazing how well it works. Absolutely. No, I appreciate your showing that. And, and you were saying when somebody's having cravings in the moment, they could do the same thing. So what kind of sentence would they use for that? Great idea. So when I do, blah, I do cravings calls with people, when I do a free cravings call, if anybody wants to check that out, so a 30 minute free call. But anyway, when we do cravings, we start with the food. So I don't have anything with me today, but like a chocolate chip cookie, we'll just use it as an, as an example. So I would ask my clients to have the cookie with them and I would have them to smell it and to think about how badly they want it. So that zero to 10. So mm -hmm. 10 is just let me eat my cookie and zero is I could throw it away. Right. So I get people to get that number. And then we would do just, even though I really want this cookie right now or this latte or this glass of wine or whatever it is, I accept how I feel. And so we would just do tapping on, I really want it. And going around the points, it was, I really want this cookie. I really want this cookie right now. It would taste so good. I really want this cookie. I want this cookie. And you'd be amazed at just one round. A lot of people will drop significantly in that thuds level of how badly they want it. And usually what happens is we usually do two or three rounds. Now, generally work them toward maybe I can choose to wait. So I don't necessarily say, um, you know, I, I, I don't want it. I'll just skip them to choose to wait so that they feel that empowerment and that control right. with whatever it is. And a funny thing happens, Tricia. I've had this happen many times where somebody will say it changed. So I did it with a guy with Mountain Dew one time. And he said, after two rounds, I think he said, when did they make stuff smell like chemicals? <laughs> it? Why does it smell so bad? Um, I've had that happen more than once where people will go, Ooh, this is disgusting. I don't want this anymore. And I never said that. I never said that yeah. food or drink was disgusting. There's something that shifts when you get into it. And then from there, we go into what is it you're really craving? And I'll give yeah. you a spoiler alert. For most people, it's connection of some type. Amen for that. Amen. Absolutely. That deep, that deep hunger that we really have. Absolutely. Um, and you talked about the sigh because I had a sigh in the middle of it and I, had, and I just had another one. Okay. I'm so glad you brought that up. So because this is energy work, it's a form of energy psychology where you're literally, because you're tapping on the body, it's a, it's a, it's a somatic experience because you're bringing in physicalness into it. So it's emotional and it's mental because the thoughts are changing and it's physical. So what happens is you have an energy shift and the energy shift, what I look for with my clients is a lot of time is either a yawn, a sigh, or even a burp. Mm. Sometimes people will start feeling nauseated 
they're dealing with deep stuff like trauma and stuff, it may cause them to feel nauseated. So I just stay with them and just stay, we just tap through it. And, and I've never had anybody throw up. I probably should knock on wood. But, uh -huh. but getting tired, happen. I can see the yawning and getting very drowsy too. That's actually, it's really funny. I, I, um, I personally, if I do a deep session on myself or you know, if I have somebody working on me, I often need a 20 minute nap afterwards. I say it's like rebooting your computer. I literally need that my brain to, to integrate it, I guess. And then I yeah. can wake up feeling fabulous. But yeah, I've had people just say, oh, I just need a break. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, this is wonderful, Ruthie. Thank you so much for sharing this. And please, um, you know, share with people how they can get a hold of you and also the resources that you have to offer. Yeah, so my website is yourtappingjourney.com. And I know you're going to put that in the show notes or whatever. You bet. So on Your Tapping Journey, there's two pages I want to draw your attention to. One is the free resources page. And I've got some meditations. I teach meditation too. So there's some meditations and there's some tapping stuff. Also on my YouTube channel, there's a lot of things you can tap along with. And there's three interesting interviews around eating and weight. One is about how birth trauma can be related. One includes past life stuff. And then one's about sexual injury and, and all that. How All of those are about how it's related to weight. Anyway. Um, I love that. Yeah. And those are all with EFT practitioners that focus in on those areas. So we just brought it in to talk about the eating and weight stuff. The free resources page um, or the YouTube channel that's just in my name, Ruthie Cohen Joiner. And then um, what is EFT page? So on the what if the what is EFT page, like I mentioned, there's a video of how to do the tapping if you forget. And there's also a little PDF with the tapping points. Beautiful. And we will put all that in the show notes, um, those links. So I love it. Thanks so much, Ruthie, for coming here. And for those of you watching on Facebook in the group, definitely put your comments in here so Ruthie can answer them uh, throughout the day and in the next few days to come. And if you're not in the Secret Sauce group, definitely join us there because that's where we, we record this live. So um, Ruthie, I want to end with one question of you, which I like to ask all my beautiful, wonderful guests on this show. And that is, what is your, what is your deepest hunger? This being the Heal Your Hunger show. Oh, I thought you were going to ask me, what have I got coming up? That would be an easier question, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, my deepest hunger is to serve women, is to see women get to a place of self-love, self-compassion, self-acceptance, regardless of where you are in the eating, weight, food journey. Because it truly is a journey. Beautiful. Um, yeah, accepting ourselves and being able to put our gifts out in the world. Whatever part I can have in people's lives and doing that really matters. I love that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Ruthie. You're doing a great job of it. I just really adore you. And I'm glad that we've been on this journey and supporting each other, you know, um, you know, through our work uh, for a few years now. Yeah. So thanks everybody for tuning in and very, very happy as to holidays to you. And uh, one other thing, yes, Ruthie. Yeah, one last thing. I just forgot to mention, I've got some stuff on the Insight Timer app and I do Insight Lives on there. And I forgot to mention that. That is a free way to do different things with tapping and meditation and <sighs> love that app. If you don't have the Insight Oh Timer, my gosh. Yeah, 60,000 free that. meditations. Yep. I recommend that in my book and to all my clients and they're on, on that. So, um, and they're meditating and, and they they post sometimes the, uh, the many days they've been meditating. So it's just a cool app. Yeah. Super cool. So thank you for that. And happy holidays to everybody. Uh, the holidays are just another day of the week, remember? And so, uh, just keep your self care intact. Nothing's more important to that. When you care, care for yourself, you have more to give to other people. So Sorry. wonderful. Thanks so much, Ruthie. Love you. And thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll see you on the next show. Take All care. Right. Thank you, Tricia. Bye everyone. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events and more, visit healyourhunger.com.